the pine are barely pushing and are quite bent. <laughs> Hello. Well, you can probably hear that it's pouring down with rain, but it's lovely and dry here under my go bar deck. Uh, but by the miracle of editing, it will suddenly become a lovely dry day, as you see me make this, and then we'll come back and we'll do a few experiments in how to use it, and I'll explain how it works. See you in a minute. Bye! I'm having two layers of MDF on the bottom of the go deck, go bar deck, and I've got to drill nine millimeter holes in the lower of the pieces for the T nut, and I'll drill eight millimeter holes for the for the actual threaded rod in the, the top layer, and I'm going to drill them independently and hope that I've measured well to avoid any slight um, errors in getting the, the drill bits the drill bit vertical. Um, I'm hoping this is a good idea. I can't put it on my drill press and I'm terrible using jigs. I think I get a, a more accurate hole um, just by sighting it. Um, but I'll, I'll hopefully my, my drill positioning will be accurate enough that I, I'm waffling. I'll just get on with it, shall I? <laughs> clean hole. And now the 8mm hole for the top. Well, it's looking good. This perhaps is slightly, slightly off but I can see straight through but the top hole might not be entirely vertical. <laughs> This is the top of the lower deck and this is the bottom of the lower deck and I'm going to hammer the T-nuts into this. Of course that's standing proud which isn't exactly what I want. Um, Oh well, <laughs> I guess it'll. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice if the, if, I, if this was flush. Fingers crossed. Let's hope this all fits together with nice vertical columns. And we're back. Now, go bar deck. It, it's a traditional clamping method. I believe it goes back like 200 years, I think. And traditionally, you'd have strips of ash, thin strips of ash, which are slightly longer than the height of the deck. 
This is adjustable, by the way, if that wasn't obvious from the, uh, the way it screws on. Um, and they're, they're slightly longer than, than the height of the deck, and you bend them in, and they try to expand out because they're stiff, and they provide pressure to the braces on your guitar top. But I'm, I'm guessing this has applications in other fields, although I've only come across it in guitar making. I haven't got any ash to use. I've got willow, but I think willow would be a bit too whippy. Um, I don't think it would provide enough um, tension. Uh, you want something that's not going to break, but at the same time you need something that is actually fairly stiff. Well, we'll see, we'll see about stiffness actually. What I have got is this piece of pine moulding, and I'm going to try this. I, I just thought I'd better at least try a piece of wood. I'm going to. This is 2.4 meters long. <laughs> try to cut this up in a in a workshop, a conservatory that's about three meters by two meters. This 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 could be tricky, but. Uh, I'll, I'll try and just cut a couple of strips. I'm going to split it down the middle, or I might cut it into three actually. Yeah, I might cut this twice down the middle just to create some sort of one centimetre wide strips. Uh, and about um, 60, cent 60 centimetres? Do I mean that? Yes, 60 centimetres long. So that's, that's the pine, and I think this is about four millimetres thick also four millimeters thick and I think a lot more suitable is this fiberglass rod. Now I got this from a curtain supplier um, I think they're used for Roman blinds I think they're stiffeners in the horizontal sections of Roman blinds and I've got some little end pieces as well uh, little rubber end pieces they're pretty loose actually I might have to glue them on but uh, at least it will stop the ends digging into the work and I, I will cut these two, uh, well, i will probably cut them to 59, no, 599 millimetres. Have I got this right? Do I mean 59? 599 millimetres, so that the, uh, by, the, by the time the saw curve works out, I can get an exact number of pieces out of these. I want them all the same length to get consistency of clamping pressure. Um, <laughs> these are three metres long. <laughs> Again, this is going to be tricky, but we'll give it a go. So I'll cut a few pieces of this and then we'll see how it works and I'll, I'll see if I can measure the, the clamping pressure. I've never tried this before, but let's give it a go. delaminated slightly then. It's okay though. Super glue will fix that. <laughs> Welcome back. Right, I've got everything set up and I've got my kitchen scales here because we're going to measure the force that uh, one of these applies. Um, this is about seven centimetres above the deck. So with this at 60 centimetres above the deck, um, this is being reduced in length by 7 to 53 centimetres. We'll see what force that produces. People talk about clamping pressure and, and that is appropriate to use because the, that force is spread over whatever area you're clamping at. So if you want to increase the pressure with this system all you've got to do is add more bars because each bar is going to apply roughly the same force. So what we're measuring here is the force not the pressure a little bit uh, of a pedant in me, I just wanted to point that out. Put it to zero, there we go. So, first one, 1.35 kilos. Add another, 2.7, so they're not, I don't know, 2.63. Five point three, so they, they do 
apply a slightly different pressure each of them but it's roughly 1.3 each and four of them is giving 5.3 kilos. Now I'm a little bit nervous this next one, this is the pine. Oh, and one of the strips is slightly wider than the others, and I think it's this one. Yeah, so we'll use the thinner strips first. And well, let's see. This is, uh, well, <laughs> it's not as robust. Well, but it, no, it's all right. That's quite a, quite a curve. And that is nearly two kilos. So... Maybe this gives me an option of when I want a little bit more pressure um, on one particular spot, I can use the pine. So may maybe this is quite useful. Although I suspect the ends will uh, need rounding over because they may dig into the, the work a little bit. That was, that was, the, that was the 11 millimetre one. I think this one's 12 millimetres. Yeah, and that's 2.1 that's interesting, it's the, the pressure's dropping all the time, 2.9, 2. 2.08, 2.09 I meant, 2.07. That's interesting, the, the wood's sort of relaxing as, uh, as time goes on. So it'd be interesting to monitor that over a period of time and see whether it's consistent, because of course the fibreglass is consistent completely. Yeah, this one's dropping all the time, that's quite curious. I'll do that again with the 11mm strip of pine and watch what happens to the the force. Oh. Yeah, we don't want it slipping. Oh, that's... yes, okay. <laughs> right, that's stable. But notice that the force is dropping. And I think what's happening is the, the, the pine is, is, is bending, maybe semi-permanently, semi but it's, it's adopting the curved form, and as it does so, it isn't applying so much pressure. So the oops, I mustn't touch it. The uh, the force is steadily dropping, which is not really something you want. Maybe with ash it doesn't do that. I don't know. I'm going to leave that a couple of minutes and see what it gets to. Right. Okay, it's continuing to drop, 1.65, and I'm getting bored watching it. <laughs> but uh, if, I, if I take the if I take this off. You can see what's happening because there's a there's a nice curve in that, and uh, I don't know whether that's uh, just semi permanent, whether it'll just relax off a little bit. I imagine it will go straight if I leave it, but that that's what's happening. You're getting a curve in it, and the, the force is dropping. One final experiment. We know that the force from the fiberglass is 1.37 and is steady. Oh, no, that's dropping slightly. Yeah, that isn't quite steady either, but uh, it's not the same effect as the wood. This is assuming my scales work, of course. Now what I'm going to do, that was, let's call that 1.37. Let's put a block on and set the scales again. So we've, we've reduced the length of this by, should I measure that? It's about 15 millimetres. And we'll put the, the rod back on again. 1.38. So that's 1.38 with the block. Reset that. 1.37. Three, six without the block. So I think we can see another advantage of the, the fiberglass rod is that it's, it's fairly consistent regardless of the height. So uh, we know that we're going to get 1.35, what was it again? Oh dear, 1.35 at that height. One point three seven, only twenty grams difference, um, in in a fifteen millimeter height difference. What I'll now do is take the radius dish away, and see whether we get much of a difference then. No radius dish, so now we've got just the height 
of this. So we're, we're, we're no longer reducing the height by seven centimeters. We're only reducing the height by three and a half. Let's see what difference that makes. Wow, 1.31. There is remarkably little variation in the force applied. That, that, that is hardly bending really. That's only a, a three and a half centimeter reduction in length. And it's, it's generating nearly as much force as when we're... In fact, let, let me take the top and let's press it down. And as I bend it, there's very little increase in the force. That, I find that quite surprising, but encouraging. So one of these rods will, will deliver about 1.3 kilos, regardless of how much you bend it, really. If you bend it in an extreme way, you get up to 1.4. But I, I find that astonishing. So, yay for fiberglass. Hello. I'm really pleased with how this has worked. I'm going to leave these overnight and see, see how much the pine deforms. Although the decision has been made, I'm, I will not be using pine. I'll be sticking with the fiberglass. It's consistent. It's 1.3 kilos, pretty much whatever height you've got. It, it really does work quite well. I've got enough fibreglass to make 50 of these struts, which is what, 65 kilos of uh, pressure, uh, or thereabouts, um, which I think is more than enough. Um, I haven't got enough end caps though. I bought 50 end caps, uh, 50 rods, 50 end caps. Mm, don't think my maths was uh, spot on there. I'm, uh, I need twice as many, uh, so I'll go and order some of these. You'll have to wait probably a month to see this in action because there's an, a few things I've got to do guitar design wise and uh, a few little tasks before I'm ready to glue all the braces in, in place. In fact, I've got to cut all the braces. That's one, uh, one little task. I will be videoing all this and you will, you will see it all. And there'll be a couple of more other guitar related videos on their way. But uh, you, we will, you will see this in action at some point. Trust me. So uh, yeah, so there we go. I hope you found this useful. Go make yourself a go bar deck. It's it's all the rage. It really is. Bye. Twenty four hours later. Let's see. All the fibergrass rods are still dead straight, and the pine. Oh, the, <laughs> the pine are barely pushing, and are quite bent. There's, there's a little bit of force there, but they've, uh, they've deformed quite a lot, so not the ideal thing to be using.